I'm Bernd Montag, CEO of Siemens Healthineers. Well, um, development like this you normally only understand in hindsight. I think um, what basketball brought me was, um, on the one hand, um, team spirit. Yeah? So the feeling of winning in a team. Um, it is a very good um, topic where you have a one common goal, one clear purpose. And it also teaches you discipline and to not give up, yeah, because statistically you lose every second game. Well, I think in Siemens Health in Years, one of the big topics is um, the diverse backgrounds we need um, to really deliver uh, to what our customers need. Yeah, I sometimes say we are in the mid tech business, so that already says we need to understand medicine, we need to understand technology, and we need to understand the healthcare business in a, in a given um, country. And that requires very, very different um, backgrounds, very different experiences yeah, from um, theoretical physicists doing image reconstruction to um, experts in reimbursement to uh, medical doctors. Yeah? And that is basically also what a team does. Yeah? So you have people who stand out in a certain role in a basketball team or in any sports team um, and only putting them together makes, makes um, a unique um, combination and, and is, is what basically makes us up to the task. Yeah? And I think this is a super motivating aspect also, yeah, that we can always learn from each other um, and have that spirit in Siemens Health in Years. Um, definitely, yeah. And better prepared for pandemics also means that we need to be better prepared for avoiding the side effects. I mean, what is maybe currently not so much in the news is that um, with the focus on the pandemic, we had a lot of side effects, especially in healthcare, yeah, that you know, normal diseases haven't been treated. I mean, people shied away from, from calling the 911 uh, numbers, yeah, the emergency numbers. Um, and uh, we basically had to almost shut down the regular healthcare uh, business, quote unquote, um, in order to focus on the pandemic. This, I'm definitely sure, will not happen again. Yeah. But I also believe, yeah, as a side effect, that um, COVID-19 has taught everyone how important a well-functional um, healthcare system is. Um, and that technology is at the center of this. Yeah? So um, I think as tragic as COVID-19 is, yeah, that in the long run, it will have a positive impact on um, the quality of healthcare. So let me approach it from a global perspective first, yeah, because I mean this is also what we what we stand for as Siemens Health in Years. I mean, as a as a side note, yeah, um, Germany is our home market, but on the other hand, it is just nine percent of our business. Yeah, so I think globally it teaches more or less every nation how important um, healthcare is as a critical infrastructure. And I think pre-COVID, there was a lot of discussion about um, 5G uh, and um, carbon neutrality, uh, diesel engines, um, e-mobility, e and so on. These are all super important topics, yeah? don't get me wrong. Um, but we somehow looked at healthcare as a cost factor and not as a super critical aspect for the quality of life and also for the for, 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 as for the basis of economy and also for the competitiveness um, of a nation. I think what has changed in every country now is that people understand healthcare is at the core of what a, what a nation, what a country needs to get right. Um, and also that it's about modern technology. Yeah? I mean, today everybody discusses about testing about um, ventilators, yeah, about uh, emergency procedures, um, 
um, about CT scanning and so on. And it's not like, hey, you know, I don't really believe in that type of technology and so on. Yeah. So, um, and there's also a, a wave of digitalization going through the system. Yeah. And I believe um, this, on the one hand, the, the higher understanding of the need um, combined with a much better also openness for technology um, will bring healthcare to ne to a next level in, 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 in every nation. I think it will. Um, and I mean, there is a certain pro and con in the German system. Yeah? And there is something, a special topic, yeah, which, which you only know when you, when you see other systems. You know, that there is in, in Germany, there is um, this so-called sectorale trennung yeah, of ambulatory and stationary care, yeah, where, where it is very hard to get to common standards of exchange. Yeah, so that very op often the, I mean, in German, the Arztbrief yeah, is, is uh, the way of communication yeah, or the uh, recipe for the pharmacy and so on and so on, yeah, because um, therefore, are from a legal point of view, so to say, diff you cannot combine these um, these entities. I think COVID nineteen has shown how important information exchange is. It has boosted um, telemedicine, um, and um, I'm sure it has accelerated the path to a more digital German healthcare system by a couple of years. Yeah. Well, near future is, I, I, I think in the near future, more or less all standard radio, radiological exams will be supported, if not done, um, by, by um, artificial intelligence. Yeah? So it's basically these type of tasks are pattern recognition tasks. And one of the big strengths of imaging is basically that it is a standardized way of producing information. Yeah? Um, that is a big, uh, big first step. Yeah, we have already um, good solutions for many standard questions, um, and basically uh, AI. How do you say that? Digitize AI eyes. <laughs> um, many additional clinical questions um, are more or less on a monthly basis. Yeah. See. Um, Let's let's describe where we are today. Yeah? I mean, we have as uh, Siemens Health um an installed base of six hundred thousand systems, um, and every hour two hundred forty thousand patients are examined or treated on these systems, which are great numbers uh, or impressive numbers. I hope. Um, but on the other hand, what is um, a little bit stunning is that basically the knowledge. Um, which is generated in each of these episodes is evaporating. Yeah, every 240,000 times per hour, somebody thinks about how to use the system and how to interpret the result, and it's basically thrown away. Yeah, um, what AI will enable, yeah, together with digitalization, is that there is a constant increase of knowledge and a constant. Um, pattern recognition in this certainly much more difficult question, yeah? um, so that uh, medicine automatically improves, improves um, every hour. Um, no. Uh, so um, I think um, AI will elevate the role of physicians. Yeah? Basically, um, what artificial intelligence will do is um, the part of the job, which is the routine, which is maybe the boring part, which is, or I call it comfort zone, that will go away. And you can focus on the next bigger thing um, and um, solving the hard cases and taking better personal care of patients. Yeah, so it is elevating people's roles, like basically every technology did in the past, yeah? and probably in every technological breakthrough, there was the discussion, it will, will it replace jobs? Um, it never did. 
Yeah, and also in this case, it will not, but it will change jobs dramatically and it will change jobs to the better. So, um, I use a very simple analogy. Um, so, today, when we want to go from A to B, yeah, we take our smartphone, it shows us where we are. Yeah, it's a little bit of a twin of our location on the map. Yeah and it shows us um, the way to be where we want to go yeah, on Google Maps or something comparable. And that is how I envision healthcare in the future, yeah, that uh, we will have a digital twin of ourselves on our smartphone, which is a more and more complete description of our health status. Um, and it will also show us the path to health if we are not healthy. Yeah? So, and what it requires is that on the one hand, we develop more and more technologies and digital tools to describe the individual. And on the other hand, as we discussed, um, to sum up all the scientific knowledge, all the AI collected um, data on all treatments yeah, in a map of healthcare, um, so that this uh, vision can become reality. And I think that's the path um, healthcare is on, whether it takes 20 years or 500 years, yeah, which was the time between Heinrich der Seefahrer yeah, and Google Maps, yeah, um, is to be seen, but I think the direction is very clear. <laughs> so you need to ask the others. No. So there's now there's two interpretation of being tall. I mean, maybe you know all the studies, yeah, so that taller people, you know, the, the taller candidate always wins the pres presidential election and so on and so on. So that is the interpretation I, of course, don't like. Um, there's another interpretation, and that is when you are tall from early childhood on, people expect more from you than from the other because they think you are older, yeah? And it's very hard to hide, yeah? <laughs> so you are, you are m more trained. <laughs> and um, I don't know which theory is right, um, but um, I believe um, it has an impact on, how, on me, on how I behave, yeah? <laughs> so uh, a private one and a uh, a uh, professional one, I, I mean a private one, what I find wonderful is um, cooking. I mean, it's not that I didn't do that before, yeah, but I mean having time um, is, is really nice. Um, the, the other thing professionally is, is, a, is, is uh, an, a, an interesting development that, you know, with this um, change to video conferences, yeah, um, it changed our habits and it may, it, 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 as much as we talk about social distancing, since I switched as many others from phone calls to video conferences, I thought, hey, I can be everywhere now. Yeah? And um, a very motivating new habit for me is that I do once per week a virtual coffee break with anybody in, the, or in, in Siemens Health Ingenieurs, yeah? so people can volunteer. Yeah? Um, and whether they are in Brazil or in India or in the United States, I can just have a chat. Um, and that is for me a, a wonderful new way to connect here. Yeah? And um, a way where, you know, when uh, as a CEO, normally you are socially a little bit distanced. Yeah? <laughs> you are put into the corner room. Yeah? So um, it is a nice way to get closer. Uh, it's a hard one. I mean, this is now a little bit of a platitude. Um, there is this love it, change it, or leave it. Um, and I, I very much believe yeah, that it only, that life is too short to do something which you don't like. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and then there are the three options. Yeah. Um, but, um, and, and uh, really, being about purpose, being being about what motivates you, and 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 solving the topics which are uh, bet between you and 
what you really like is 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 why 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 this resonates very much with me. Yeah? I give you a non-answer in the beginning, which I uh, which comes from the heart. Yeah, because when we say we are about diversity, that means that there is a role model in everyone. Yeah, there is something in everyone, in 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 every colleague, um, in my children. Yeah, which which I want to copy. Yeah, which I want to learn. Yeah. So and and I believe it's not the one hero. Yeah. Um, which should serve as a role model, and I think sometimes you know I'm I'm sitting in in meetings, or I was sitting in meetings when we still had meetings, and was reflecting about hey, well you know in in everybody you know what is the what is it what I can learn from this person yeah what is this what what she or she really really does better yeah so that is the non answer. Um, the um, other one I, I I think a person who had a lot of impact on me. Is um, Eric Reinhardt, yeah, who is who has been so to say the pre pre predecessor uh, uh, of me, yeah, who was running back then. We were still part of the big Siemens um, Siemens Medical uh, for 14 years in an, uh, and brought it from a very difficult time um, to basically the foundation of where we, where where uh, then later also I could start. Um, very impressive personality um, and somebody I learned a lot from. Um, many favorite books, but one I very the the one which I have recommended the most is a book called The Arrival from Sean Ten, and it is a book without words about a, a refugee family um, arriving in an imaginary other country. 